Duane. Thank you. Okay, it is uh, maybe a minute or so after nine o'clock. I'll call this uh, finance uh, committee meeting for you today on March 8th. Um, this meeting and all of the meetings of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statute so that the students of tree may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. Um, roll call will indicate that uh, we all have our present. Just before we approve the agenda, I think, Ron, you got your pencil ready? I got some trivia questions today, so. <laughs> I had a little time to, to think about these. Um, these are all from March. I got three of them, they're short. So on March 6th, Oreo cookies came into existence in what year? 1938. 19. 21. Earlier. 1912. This one here is a little different. Um, on, on March 7th, the game Monopoly, which most of us grew up with, came into existence on what year? 1929. Too early. <laughs> 37. 31. You're getting closer, 33. <laughs> and the interesting fact about Monopoly, when they brought it into uh, the game, the, the company had to apologize because the, if you remember, there's Marvin. You can land on Marvin. Marvin Gardens. Marvin Gardens. However, they misspelled it. The correct spelling was Marbin, M-A-R-B-I-N. So Monopoly company had to apologize to the city because they got it wrong at that time. <laughs> And the last one, some of you probably know, on March 3rd, Time Magazine issued its first issue in what year? 1929. <laughs> You're gonna get that one, yes. <laughs> Actually, it's 100 years old now. Oh, it's okay. 1923. Now I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> not debatable. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, just for- Sorry, in that motion. <laughs> Okay, now we can approve the agenda. More moves to approve the agenda is presented. Will be second. Any other questions on the agenda? All question, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> it's carried. Again, I was not here on the February 8th, but you did have the minutes. So. Dave Newman moved approval. Captain seconds. Any <clears throat> other questions on the minutes? No, no, call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion is carried. <coughs> Public comments. Public comments, anybody? Okay, we'll uh, continue on. Um, the first one, I think, Brian, are you going to take it? Uh, again, we, uh, we meeting, uh, when we had our committee meeting on Monday. Land and water, we did discuss this and approved it. So now he'll give us a little more insight into it. I uh, dropped a, a copy of stuff in front of each of your spaces that looked like this. A little more to read than, than we can handle in a few minutes, but the important page is the front page. Uh, so I was approached last October by um, their counterparts at Fox Wolf Watershed Alliance in Appleton. They're a nonprofit group that deals in some of the similar issues that we work on and um, work on a lot of grants with some of the counties in particular. To date, it's been more in the Lower Fox River area. But they were um, part of a grant that was submitted by Edge Cooperative. Edge Cooperative is a, a dairy cooperative that was founded in 2010 on the eastern side of the state, Kiwani area. And anyway, Edge Cooperative has been awarded a $50 million Climate Smart grant from the federal government. And Fox Wolf Watershed Alliance is a sub grantee for just under $8 million of that grant. And Fox Wolf's part of that proposal is to fund an agronomist position in each of eight Northeast Wisconsin counties. 
So um, we are one of those counties that they've proposed this to, along with Calumet, Brown, Winnebago, Washera, Fond du Lac, Toronto. So basically our, our area of the uh, upper and lower Fox River basins and the Wolf River Basin. Um, so along with that proposal uh, on this front sheet here, that cream colored column is really what they're offering us. It's uh, $313,000 for staffing for uh, a minimum of a period of three years. The grant's actually a five-year grant, so we can sort of use that how we see fit within the five-year period. And then the second part of that is $462,000 of cost sharing to uh, implement the deliverables of the grant, which really revolves around uh, cover cropping and no-till implementation, uh, specifically in a, in a two-year rotation, because that's what they need in order to, to claim any environmental benefits with the federal government to, to doing those practices. This fits in pretty good with a lot of the stuff we're doing. We've We've moved to these um, soil health type practices over the last number of years, uh, which is trying to keep a, a living green cover on fields as much as possible. And this is really more of the of the same thing. Um, unfortunately for us, you know, we get funding in geographical areas throughout the county. The the bright side of this is it would be a countywide um, eligibility, so we could have the ability to work with some farms that we have not worked with to date. But at any rate, it's taken them a couple of months to get all of this approved. Um, I attended a meeting on February 22nd where they they formally said we've been approved to, to go ahead with this budget for any county that's willing to participate. And at that point in the meeting, all eight counties were willing to go forward, um, you know, barring their similar approvals that through, through finance and creating positions in county board. So that's kind of where we stand today is um, looking at accepting this grant, which would come along with the creation of a, of a grant funded position in my department. Anybody got any questions or comments? It, uh, it's really a neutral thing to the county, but it's beneficial for in the agricultural area. Another, another way to try to keep the, like you said, the soil intact a little better. So. The uh, numbers that are actually on resolution 44 are just reflective of what would change in our budget for 2023. There'd obviously be some higher numbers associated with a full year of this grant in the future. So is there any cost to us? No, not for the, the grant period. Um, I guess the only thing I can see in here is they they include uh, $29,000 for vehicle purchase or lease. And if we were really going to turn that into a vehicle purchase, $29,000 does not quite get us there. So there'd be a little extra cost in that. Side of that, no. Any other questions? But the second year, the twenty-nine, it would be $29,000 the second year then for the vehicle or just the first year? That's just the one time for the, okay. the five-year right. grant period. So. Okay. Question on that. So you don't think you can lease a vehicle for three years out for $29,000? Oh, I think we could, yeah. And I think that's sort of how they assumed we would do that. Um, I don't believe in purchasing if we don't know how far along it's going to go. Right. And the second question would be then after our grant five years down the road, what are you going to do with a, a ground amendment in your department? That's that's really the, the key question in all of this. And, you know, Edge Co-op's hope is that the counties will find ways to keep these people on. In our particular case, it probably fits in with some other changes in our department. You know, we're three to five years out from possibly a couple of retirements. So um, the other option here is that in the Great Lakes Basin right now, um, there is a lot of money flying around, um, federal money. Um, just this year alone, this would be our third new grant um, from Great Lakes funding. Uh, there's two others in my budget uh, that total almost a half a million dollars for the like three-year period. Um, some of those have staffing money that come with that we're using to pay current staff. Um, 
Fox Wolf Watershed Alliance is going to look at um, writing additional grants to refund these positions for a longer period of time. Obviously, we're not guaranteed any success there, but things really look pretty good out to about 2030, 2031. Um, as far as funding opportunities go, so I think Lee, the worst the worst case scenario is that person would not have a job. Right, well, that's the worst. Yeah, case. no, 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 I just but with them that's certainly that, a possibility, Lee. You, yeah, you you got people that might retire, so you could absorb them and have them still keep them, which would be very beneficial because by that time they'll be working. They'll be trained. <laughs> they'll be trained. Yes. Yeah. No. 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 I think it's a great idea. Good. We'll need a motion. This, Jerry. Yeah, I move to approve resolution uh, number forty-four for grant funding. <clears throat> There's a second. I'll second that. Thank you. Other discussion. Good, good comments. Question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. There's no motion. Carried. Thank you. Thanks. Nutrition program donation acceptance. This came down from DHHS. They approved it um, at their March meeting um, last week on Wednesday. And I don't recall the number and I can't exactly see the screen because it's a little well, the resolution says, um, you know, supervisor to accept $1,000 from an anonymous donor and $2,000 from Howard and Rebecca Cook and $5,000 from Victor and Christine Anthony Family Foundation. And the back on his senior nutrition. <clears throat> so it's quite a bit of money. And it was Rebecca Cook. Uh, Roberta. Yeah. Did I? Yeah. Roberta. Usually we don't argue over accepting money. But... <laughs> also moved to accept it. Thank you. Second. Second. Any other questions, comments? Very nice. All the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Three no motions carried. Thanks. We only got number 41. And that one's um, very similar, another donation um, to the nutrition program. This one's from Agupure Incorporated, $3,699.25. Johnson moves to approve. Mark seconds. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just curiosity question is how they come up with an odd amount, but that's here. There. <laughs> <laughs> they could have had 75 cents. Make it a, yeah, I don't know. That's all they had left. <laughs> Maybe it was that cheese curd I took in it. You what? <laughs> well, that's from the cheese company. I said they made yeah. a cheese curd there. Oh, um, any further discussion on that uh, resolution? All the questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Three non motions carried. Thanks. Number 43 there. Who's got that one? I don't know a, a lot about it. Um, I'll admit that right out of the out of the gate, but um I the way that I understand it for the opioid um, settlement. We do have to pass a resolution um, as an agreement in order for Chair Kepin to sign um, to continue on with the, the settlement. Does that sound about correct? That sounds correct. Yeah. Okay. Could I add something? Um, at the WCA meeting, I was just at Andy Phillips talked about that. And he said there was a 50 billion settlement in Wisconsin is going to get 1.76% of that 50 billion settlement. So. I don't know what that means to us, but there's it's a lot of money, 50 billion. One percent of that or more expensive. Well, 
So the resolution is a, is a lengthy one. It, yes, it certainly is. I, I'm not going to read it all, but it, it is lengthy. And I assume Diane, you're. Yeah, this was uh, put together by our outside council and is the template resolution that was uh, proposed to all counties. Um, to, like Chrissy said, to authorize the board chair to um, approve the settlement agreement on behalf of the county. Um, the, the leveraging um, the more counties who sign the agreement, the more the bigger slice of the pie, obviously, that we get um, statewide. Um, and the uh, settlement, this has to be um, engaged in by April 18th. So there's a, a time sensitivity uh, to, the, um, to the authorization as well. So I would recommend that. Uh, approval. Block most approval. Mm -hmm. Second. Michael seconded. Okay. Further discussion? I'm just reading you out of here. It just says four additional Wisconsin counties, Milwaukee, Dean, Milwaukee, Shaw, and Walworth hired separate councils and joint in litigation. Was there, is that a unique thing or is that just? Um, well, that was their the path that each count those they, four they counties chose, cho correct. Um, and they they had their independent counsel through it, throughout the entire litigation. So they haven't been represented by Krieger Dickinson like we have. Um, and there previously we had the uh, the manufacturer uh, settlement, and this is for the pharmacy companies. That was kind of a three pronged Walmart, thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? All the questions? All of the favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those are not motions carried. Thank you. Now we're going to just discuss a little bit more about the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, right. It's on the floor. <laughs> on your desk this morning, I just put um, a, a sheet for the American Rescue Plan Act funding allocation. Um, and also for your reference on the back side, I also um, put on what the municipalities within um, the county received as well. So on the back side, you can see that um, the municipalities within the county received a, a just over 5.5 million throughout. Um, but then it, on the front side, you can see where we're at on allocations. Um, I also included the local assistance and tribal consistency fund. We received 50,000 in 2022, and we'll be receiving um, 50,000 in 2023. The funding, um, the allowable expenditures for this, um, for these, for this revenue is also um, basically follows the same guidelines as, as the ARPA. Um, guidelines. So those are also included in the special revenue fund and segregated into that account as well. Um, as you can see down below under the community projects, um, currently the county has allocated about just over 4.25 million or 42.53% of our total allocation to community projects. Um, I, I put in we can kind of talk about that a little bit, but I have Brian's harvestable parian buffers and also the well testing because I felt like those were community type projects, um, even though they're kind of being oversight by, by Brian and land and water. But then under the county projects, um, you can see the allocation we had for the premium pay. And then um, in the 2023 budget, <clears throat> we had the, um, some allocation of funds of, of the ARPA funding. On, in the 2023 budget, um, we had the PTF tipping floor expansion upgrade for $500,000. The Solid Waste Board did remove that request. The, um, they do not feel the need to continue with that project. Um, so far, year to date, we or life to date, we've accumulated approximately $156,000 of interest on those funds. So right now we have an unallocated amount of about $3.8 million. So what I wanna talk about today is kind of process discussion moving forward. Um, these funds have to be expended or obligated by 2020, 1231, 2024. Um, at the onset of this, we had a, a group of, it, was, it consisted of myself, um, Ryan, Jeff McCorsky, 
um, and Mandy, Welch, and Ted Fredette, and kind of just compiling all of the projects, but ultimately um, in making sure that they all fit the guide, that fit the guidelines of the ARPA expenditures. And then the departments came or and talked about those projects, each of those projects with the finance committee. We've kind of been somewhat at a standstill, meaning there, there we've had some um, some department heads have reached out to me. I've also had we've also had some community members reach out, um, and now it's kind of like you know they're kind of trickling some some questions or some some requests. Would this fit? Does that meet the guidelines? Originally, um, when we had this amount unallocated. You know, my th my thought process kind of went to the fact that we're in the staffing for the courthouse. I wasn't sure what's going to come out of that. Obviously, when we had the space need study done um, five six years ago, the cost of that was right around fifteen million um, for what their recommendations were. I don't know what the recommendations were going to come out of this, but ultimately that would be a debt service a debt service request um, to if we decide to move forward with any what comes out of that project. So then, you know, my my thought process was at that time, if these funds, if funds hadn't come in or requests hadn't come in, we could um, maybe reduce the amount of that debt service. And therefore basically, cause you know, debt service doesn't apply to levy limits. So whatever our debt service is, we can go above our levy limit. But then I felt like that would maybe kind of, um, <coughs> help all taxpayers per se, because we wouldn't be, um, we wouldn't have as high of a debt service if we utilized those funds for that piece. But then now I started having some inquiries come in and I guess the question is, how do you wanna move forward? I don't necessarily know that, you know, that that group of five, do we need to continue to meet to look at one project when ultimately it would come back to this committee anyway. So we just um, if those as those projects trickle in, do we bring those projects to this committee to review and decide how to move forward? Because ultimately, that's how it's gonna it's gonna end up here anyway. So um, I just want to kind of talk about process review and how how the finance committee wants to move forward with um, that piece. And I don't know, Ryan, do you have anything to add or Mandy from our group? Just one thing I just wanted to add, because you see on the on the back side here, we talk about the amount of ARPA dollars that each of the municipalities had received. And that's what's kind of interesting is that we're starting to get these municipalities that are wanting to utilize some of our unallocated ARPA dollars for some projects. And so that's kind of an, an additional uh, thing to figure out here is we know that these municipalities receive these dollars. They've obviously got to the point where they're all been expended or obligated to some degree. And now they're contacting us or contacting me directly if how we could possibly, if there's a way for us to be able to help them out with some other projects. And it's not, I wouldn't say it's all municipalities. We also have one that's outside of that from a, a private group concerning childcare. So like Heidi was saying, what we're really looking for is how you guys would like to move forward with these projects. Do we wanna go through the same process we have been? or something different? Well, just a comment I would have is, uh, for Heidi or, or mm -hmm. yourself, I realize we have to expend this money by a certain time. When would you like to have the drop dead date for that so you don't wait to the last? You have, do you have you give some thought to that? Well, it has to be obligated. So we have to have a signed contract how, how we're going to spend the money, no matter how we decide to do it by December 31st, 2024. You know, I would be comfortable, you know, if if we know that contract is going to be signed, meaning if you're going to, for for example, if we're going to, you know, in my mind, if if we had funds available that we were going to apply to to whatever comes out of the space needs study, if anything, um, obviously, if you have a construction pro project and you have a contract signed with a construction manager, you know, construction company, <clears throat> that would be obligated. So I'm comfortable with that piece. But if it's just you know, um, purchasing purchasing equipment or purchasing something like that, I would obviously want to have it somewhat purchased or at least, you know, you have to have that contract signed or purchase contract signed. So I guess, you know, also 
probably by the end of this year, it would be nice to say, Why you just say I'm sorry, by the end of this year, it would be nice to say, you know what, we've had, we have it allocated. We have it allocated and we know where we're headed with the remaining balance of it. And I know in the beginning, we talked about this, that at least I thought the committee felt the same is a lot of these monies we wanted to try to use in a way that maybe it made economic benefit for the county also. Right. And that was kind of the background behind it. Uh, right. So I guess my question is, if we got seven months or six months or nine months, whatever the case is here, I'm not sure. Does the committee have a unique way of approaching this? Or, I mean, you want to take time in doing it, but who should be heading this up to come to a conclusion, I guess? Mr. Chair, with the comment muddy the waters a little more. I know at East Central a month or two ago, I was sitting next to, I think, out of Gamey County. I thought it was out of Gamey County, and they said that they were going to help out the different municipalities in the county. I mean, they all had want lists, and they had a committee to go over that. And I know about three months ago, uh, Kaz Muskie, did she ever get a hold of you? Yes. Oh, okay. End the conversation. Did you ever get this here? Yes, I did. I did. I realize we're hitting you, you know, kind of stone against the stone wall just this minute. We don't necessarily have to do anything today, but I think the idea was to get this maybe on our agenda another month or so again. So it gives some thought to what you have in mind. Is that fair? I mean, because today it's kind of a cold carrot right here. <laughs> but, yeah. But I guess the, the other thought process would be either for Heidi or, or Ryan or those that were helped head this up for the first round. Do you want a committee of some type to continue to look at options? I guess it doesn't hurt. At least that way we're exposed to what people are thinking. Meaning to this committee? Well, I think it's important that if someone is requesting funds, I mean, this the the group of us, we were just compiling that data, you know. So to have you hear the um, hear the thought process behind it from the people that are actually requesting those funds, be it whether it's internal or external, I think that's important. Right. Would you be still expecting to have some sort of a presentation in front of the finance committee from the people who are requesting the money, similar to what we did? The first time around? I think it doesn't hurt because at least they had the option to expose themselves as what they had in mind for thinking. But I think what happens in the case sometimes like this, there was a lot of talk, a lot of action back here a few months back, and then it just goes off to the side and everybody loses track of it for a while. And it's like, oh, we still got quite a bit of money here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Mr. Chairman, I, I think they by them getting all the background information, the, they know whether it fits the programs or not fits the programs. Heidi knows whether it's it, she can put it in the allocations and such before we even bring it here. Because so I, I agree with you. I think the committee just keeps doing it and keeps forwarding the information to us as they, you know, as it comes in. Yeah, and, and maybe. You know, we're in the month of March, and maybe the next time we put it on the agenda is May. Okay, give you a little time to. Is that fair or is that too early? No, that'd be fine. We'd be able to present by then. I mean, because the, the, I know that the three projects that I have presented to me already from community, we'd be able to present fairly soon. Okay, well, it's up to yeah, you. That wouldn't be no problem. That wouldn't be a problem at all. Um, the only thing I would think though is that if we're if we're going to be allowing them to be coming in, trick trickling in. Um, one thing that we were like we were discussing is. We would have to also keep a look on the the long term on this in terms of where else you know where else would we possibly want to go with this because of that's me use this money on a, a lost revenue you know and so it's hard sometimes to keep track of the, the big picture if we're in each meeting we have one more small project we're kind of slowly eating away at it you know so it might be a good idea to have another meeting where we just go through the whole thing so we get it and we just close it off after that so now we know exactly what we're going to be leaving for future projects for the courthouse remodel for whatever the case may be and now we have this allocated for internal external you know what i mean if it comes every month between now and the end of this year it might no. be kind of hard yeah that, that, that i wouldn't want right i guess what i'm what i was trying to say 
I did probably a poor job is if there's a few out there that are probably meets the criteria and, you, and so they know where they're at. Right. Deal with them maybe in the month of May and then maybe wait a while because like with the courthouse, we don't know when that's going to come into us. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I think what I'll do too is that I, I'll send off an email to all of our city administrators to let them understand that we're doing this because what I don't want is to have feeling people feeling like they, you know, some people got left out. You know, I mean, we've heard from two cities and I don't want all the other cities feeling like, well, I didn't realize that this was even a possibility. So that way we have equality. Yeah, that'd be good. So let's bring her back in May and see what happens. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just a question. Uh, your last point, I think, is very good, um, is uh, do we want to have that discussion here in the Finance Committee before we shoot something off to the city administrators? Is, uh, I know they'll jump, at least <laughs> the London will jump on it. And uh, so they probably would use all $3 million if, if given the opportunity. Yeah. And so the question is, do we as a committee want to talk about the split, so to speak, what we want to keep in the county? Because I agree, uh, if we sent all $3 million to New London, um, Clintonville, Mopaca, and everybody else would feel left out and that kind of thing. And I thought you were going to say New London would take it all. They would. They would. They would. Well, and I know on the onset, and yeah. Ryan could probably talk better about this, but I know on the onset, when we were all getting together and talking about community and where the where the where there were issues, one of the issues was housing. Mm -hmm. and but that wasn't something Wapaka County was necessarily set up for that. You know, we, we didn't have, you know, right. the resources. I mean, that wasn't a county type of, a, of projects, but we also know that that's an issue. So, you know, if, you know, so if somebody, if one of these municipalities are looking at a housing project and, or something like that, that was an area where we felt we, we couldn't really navigate to. So um, there's, you know, so that's the other thing, you know, it's like, those are kind of some things that we know are still hanging out there as, as issues. I know, housing's a very good example because again, you know, London had talked about a number of housing projects and like I say, they could chew up a good bunch of that. They're going to redo Main Street, for example. And so if we're just talking about improvements to the municipality or whatever, they could use a 3 million for that. And do we want to, so how do we want to split that money up? I think we should have a discussion in here saying, you know, maybe all the communities get a fair share or whatever, or maybe housing, we talk about housing or, or something else. So I'm sure every community, New London, Wapaka, Clintonville probably would have housing projects mm -hmm. if given the opportunity. I, I, I think I think you're absolutely right. I, I that's my the impression that I get from the cities is that their want list or wish list is way bigger than what they have for resources. And so I, if if we say with the unallocated we have left, it was a three point eight, and if we say we'll make making this number up one point five available to community, I don't think we'll have any problem whatsoever having that oh, earmarked. It's going to be more a matter of taking, you know, five million down to one point five, you know. It's, it's, it, yeah, that's part of a much bigger discussion. And I, I think you're right, Dave. I think that's a really good way to look at this because we have to look at how we're planning on, you know, the, the future of these, of these dollars. You know, how much do we want to have set aside for other, you know, courthouse projects as well? Because if we make it all available, the 3.8, it's all going to be out the door. Yep. Well, and even, even if we make 1.5 and you send out an email, okay, you're going to prorate each that's right the yeah population that's, or something you know it's yeah. something's yeah. got to be done first at first come first serve where somehow i mean quickest I, I would say every community use it <laughs> oh yeah first come first serve open the door for yeah, it would have to be prorated by you don't think the county can find enough projects to get rid of three million dollars well i, I, I mean, without going i mean we're we're opening up another can of worms if we're, we're going to the communities yeah. Yeah. well without, without the way i like it you open it up then you're going to have a lot of issues of where it goes, where if we can find enough, which I assume we can, to spend $3 million in the county projects, just leave it in the county budget where it belongs and go forward. Yeah, that's my opinion. Well, and, and you already can see what he said he got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, our township got so much. Yeah. I and mean, you can just say nothing. 
this committee is going to look at it, bring it back, and see where they're going to get rid of it. I'm sure they'll get rid of it. Yeah, I don't think there's any question whatsoever that the county could find a place, find a good home for that money too. Really, Lee, I have no objection to not even worry about the well the municipalities. Now I know you got some emails or whatever no. or phone calls on it, and obviously, if I was in their position, I would try to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we should see what comes first from the county people before we send it out. I agree with that. Instead of, opening can, the, instead of opening the can of work. And I can resolicit the department heads. I mean, I have, I've had it reach out from a couple of department heads and I can resolicit. And I mean, obviously most of them are here. Um, if there's, you know, if, you know, before May, if you have something out there, let me know and, and we'll, we'll review those pieces and, <clears throat> and have the option to come back to this committee in May to look at all those requests. Yeah, County wide, and then we can talk about how we want to move forward. And we, I don't know, space needs study. Um, it won't be done by May. I mean, we aren't going to have an outcome by May. Um, but it's also, yeah. So I mean, late May, and maybe it's again. You yeah. talked, well, you know, I talked about by the end of the year. Maybe, maybe it's June if, or something. Maybe these municipalities. We say, you know, we will look. At, we'll take a look at it. Sure. During our budget process to see what we have for capital out there and it, what we have available for levy and all that piece as well. Yeah, yeah, we could we could present in May for the ARPA and then in the June's meeting we'll have because we won't have to make any decisions on that day in May. So we'll understand what we're looking at from internal external for ARPA and then we can by then by the end of May by June's meeting we'll have a good feel for the courthouse remodel. So then we can kind of put the whole puzzle together. Yeah. That sounds like a good thing. Okay. Thank you. I understand it. Thank you. Okay. Can you move on? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, I was just looking at the title there, cash drawer approval. I'm okay. Can um, we get cash out of the drawer? Oh. Um, branch one is um, is requesting a $50 $50 cash for within their department. Um, I just think it's important that this committee approves those um, cash requests where departments are holding cash within their department. Um, so they're requesting $50 for juvenile files and um, Megan Waller will be the custodian of the money. I think the memo was in your packet from Judge Nielsen. Um, so if, if you approve that, we'll get her the $50 that she needs for that cash drawer. Mark, most of uh, approve that cash. Hold on, seconds. Thank you. Any further discussion on the cash drawer of the amount? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, I just wanted to update and get a new approval on the non-lapsing appropriations. We talked about this in February. I did have some adjustments, which I kind of assumed I would. But I kind of like to get a jump on it ahead of time. But um, we did have some adjustments uh, on the veterans relief. I pulled in. I did, I pulled in the wrong amount on that. So that as a um, was reduced by four hundred thirty six dollars. Um, the squad replacement. Um, I had a long story short. We added twenty nine thousand nine hundred forty five dollars to that. The Motorola's film and arrest form. This was a 2021 project that um, we just now got the bill for in 2023. So that one um, is an increase. Uh, the shelter at Simcoe Tower, um, I thought that that project was completed, but realized that that was not um, totally done. So I won a non lapse for that. And then um, I missed an equipment replacement for Parks and Rec for $39,390. And then I had a wrong amount on the conservation easement. So that non-lapsing, those are the um, changes I'm requesting from last month. Any further discussion on that? I realize you've discussed that a little more in my absence, but anybody have a question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion is carried. 
Hey, I just wanted to give you an update. Last month, um, as part of the non-lapsing, you approved the, um, the financial operation review. It's called the business op review on the fiscal operations of the county. Um, I wanna start out by thanking you for that opportunity um, that that process is, has started. We have a kickoff meeting tomorrow afternoon. Um, and then we'll talking about um, the, the document requests that they're going to need, and they'll be coming in and interviewing um, fiscal staff and trying to get a feel for what our operations are now and what we can do to improve and make efficiencies. And this is about an eight to 10 week process by the time we'll be done. So hopefully we'll have an update to this committee um, in June. So I'm really excited about the, the process and I really appreciate the, the opportunity that you're giving us for that. Um, in addition to, um, to kind of piggyback that, I just also wanna um, extend a, a really big thank you out to both um, Tara Mitten, the, my new assistant, and then um, Dawn up on second floor. They've really done a really good job on keeping up on things with the um, fiscal operations with Health and Human Services. Um, we've just got pretty much everything, all the revenue and final um, reports, I think Tara finalized yesterday or possibly she has one more yet today, but we pretty much have all the um, expenditures reported and now we'll start getting all the annual reports that are required by um, on the Health and Human Services side of things, which is, which is a lot. So we're getting through that. And so um, I think we're holding that position vacant, waiting till this um, is all completed. We, I think we'll be able to manage. Um, so again, I appreciate that opportunity and just wanted to let you know where we're at on that piece. And if at, see if you had any questions regarding that before we move on. I'm sorry. Who's the concern? Uh, Clifton Larson Allen is the um, and they're coming from out in Philadelphia. The team is out of Philadelphia. So they'll be coming. Um, I'm thinking, we're thinking probably the first week in April because of um, some vacations that are booked. So um, that, that's when they'll be here. Good experience from out east. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited. I've had um, multiple conversations with the, the team that'll be heading that up and I think it'll be a, a really good process for us to go through um, and just try to just try to get a, a good base to move forward on. All right. So I have the 2023 financial analysis in front of you. Um, the operating cash flow for as of the end of February is was about just um, almost 49 million, which is the highest it's been in February in the last five years. Um, inter or delinquent tax and tax seeds owned by county, again, is um, at about $1 million. Um, and it's extremely low as compared to the last five years. This is actually going to be um, show a really good, and this is important because as we talk about debt service, um, this is going to do um, reduce our increase our unassigned fund balance, which is always a, an indicator, one of the indicators that when you go out to the bond market that the that Moody's will be looking at when they rate, rate our agency. So um, this is always helpful to start seeing this kind of a trend um, moving into a possible debt issue in um, 2024. Don't know if that's going to happen, but if it does, this is a really we're really in a good spot moving into that piece if this if this maintains. Um, interest on investments, we're finally seeing an uptick in that. Um, at the end of February, there's about 185,000 already booked in interest income. So, and then um, 60,000 in a unre in an unrealized gain. So that is good as well. And then interest on delinquent taxes, not so much, but that's because of the the um, the one up above it. So, 
Right now we have about 828,000 that we've received in sales tax revenue just into the first two months of the year. Um, projecting that out, we're actually looking at 5.3 million with a 4.9 million budgeted. Now, as you pull in more months, that, that will fluctuate, but at least um, we're on trend to at least meet budget. So out of the first two months anyway. Um, and then the capital improvement plan, not a lot going on there yet. Um, there is some, some highway construction, but the invoices for those, I think it, it weren't booked into Feb, they're booked into March, not into February. So you'll see that next month. Um, operating revenue, we're about 2.1 million under 17% of the budget. And then um, our expenditures are 1.4 million under 17% of budget. So we're about right in line as to where we would anticipate we should be um, at this time. And then um, highway cash flow at the end of February is 1.7 million, which is about right where they were at in 2019. And then, and so they're kind of back to the trend where they were back in 18 and 19, where they, we saw the dip in 20 and 21. On the detail piece, um, like I said, we should be at about 17%. Um, when I was looking at the detail, there was nothing that really caused for alarm. The one thing I did wanna point out is um, in, in health and human services, you'll see in the other governmental, um, that number is only booked through January. Because again, we're, well, first of all, March 8th is, is um, for a meeting is really, early, so we haven't booked the revenue for those um, grants for February yet. So that's why you're seeing that um, dip there. But other than that, there was nothing that really caused me for concern um, out of the first two months of the, of the year. The last thing I wanted to do is we were talking, since we were talking about it, if you go to page seven, um, the opioid settlement is in a segregated fund. And then um, I just wanted to just mention that piece, what we've gotten to date. Um, right now, there's $289,000 that the counties received in opioid settlements, but that includes um, the Johnson & Johnson settlement paid five years. So we've received um, up through the first five years of that settlement already. So we won't receive another payment for that piece until I have the spreadsheet at, at, down in my office. But, um, and then the one that you just signed today, we don't necessarily have a dollar amount yet as to how much funds will be coming into Wapaka County on that settlement piece. But as that gets updated, I'll try to keep you um, abreast of what's happening on that, on that front. And as far as the process on that one, um, Jed, Jed Wolt, our health, public health officer, he's actually kind of, um, there's, a, there's a group meeting, kind of like we had as the ARPA group, they're meeting trying to um, bring in projects and, and such to, that would cover the, what the allowable uses are on the opioid settlements. And then eventually as, that, as they start um, having projects, they'll become into finance committee to authorize the, those uses. So right now, nothing has been expended and that authorization would come be a resolution the same as the ARPA's have, the ARPA funding has. And that's all to be covered by abatement cost purposes. So that's what I have on the financial analysis. Any questions? I think he's gonna talk about the um, voucher approval and the uh, Hey, and I've had a conversation over the years. Basically, is, does it make sense for us to do it at this level or not? Um, they're already approved and paid for, and we see the sheets. So, are we just going through a motion here on the wrong thing for the wrong for the wrong? Issue, but go ahead. So I have, and I've had a, a, a couple of department heads also reach out to me and I went to the ordinances and I looked under um, chapter two, which talks about the, the duties of each committee. The only um, committee that this actually addresses, 
this is actually called out on is the highway committee. There's no other committee that addresses voucher approval. I think that there's a lot more valuable information that can be provided to committees. Um, and ultimately, you know, the finance committee, I'm emailing you this, this report. There is, um, there's always been a concern in my mind that of some of the information that is provided um, on the report as far as, um, you know, information that, that, that could be, you know, confidential. Um, not that, not that we're not keeping it confidential, right? It's, that's not what I'm questioning. It's a, there's just some information there. Um, and I just think that there's some other valuable information that can be, can be utilized. You know, I give you the financial analysis. I can give you even more information on the financial health of the, of Wapaka County. Um, and I think each committee could also do the same. I'm not, calling any committee out because any committee can ask for whatever information they want. I guess my question to this committee is, is it necessary and do you feel value in receiving the check register and approving it um, on a monthly <coughs> basis? If not, I would discontinue that process because there's nothing that I'm seeing that states that that is necessary that you do so. You approve a budget for each department um, at the beginning of the year. They're, they're make their having their expenditures based upon the budget that they've been allocated. And that's that's really what it is. And when you're approving that payment register, they've already been paid. And this goes back in the day, way before my time, when there used to be a, a voucher and the finance committee would sign every single voucher before it would actually get paid. That's where this process is coming into play. So I'm guidance from this committee and department heads will have to, if it's something that they wanna ask their committee to forego, they can do that. But again, it's whatever, I mean, county board committees can have whatever information they, they want, so. Sure, yeah, thank you. In my time here, there's really been only one, sometimes two that requested those, wanted it every month. And that's fine, but they're both retired now. And I, I really see no reason to split a stack of paper for every month that we have to have that. And I always get it. Yep. Any information, it's you know, it's it's always available for you to and technology has taken us a long ways over the last year. So it's I, I don't see a reason. Do we need a motion on this? We won't get that email then each time in the finance report. Is that what you're saying? She can email it to yeah. you. Yeah, I, I read them. I read every bill. If you want to read, read them, that's fine. I read through that religiously. <laughs> and I know Pat Craig did too. Yeah, they're all paid for our time we get it. So you don't have to print it for me. I can read it on the computer. Well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Printing yeah. it. We're talking about printing it. Printing it and approving it at the, I mean, I just don't even know if it, you know, if it's, I mean, I can continue to email it to all of you, however you want it. Um, that's fine. I just want to make, you know, it was just a conversation. And like I said, I have had a couple of department heads reach out to me where their department, you know, they're taking it to their committee and wanting to know if, you know, why, why is this process happening? So it, the question has come up. And so I kind of reviewed and tried to figure out where it's coming from. And I think that's where it's coming from. If we don't review it, the bill has already been paid. Right. What good is it doing for us to Review it. If you're not reviewing it, you're not doing your job. Well, it depends on how you look at your job. We're we're hoping the, the staff we have are doing their job. Uh, I assume Heidi has seen all these bills, and and if it, it goes through, she would question it, whether it was a legitimate one or not. You know, so why? I don't know where it's going. Who is getting paid for? So. I sit here and read it, and I look at it, and I mean, it's great to read. You never have any questions, huh? If it comes to me and it's already been paid, you going to give me the check back after I sent to you a check? No, but I want to see what we're paying for. Well, that's fine. I guess that's up to you. You can uh, have Heidi keep sending it to you, but I, I read uh, the last three months, I've read them on my iPad, and mm -hmm. I get to the point where I got a headache trying to keep scrolling the thing, and... Uh, and there's a lot of little things that are there, but 
uh, I assume that the departments are efficiently run in our system. When, when I look at I last month's bills, I see where we pay Dr. Figo 960 some bucks. And I've been against that my whole life since I've been here because we're using a personality test that was probably developed 20 years ago. And he comes in and reviews after they've done everything here. And, you know, I do question some things when I go through stuff. I'm being straightforward. Yeah. Well, no, no. Do you balance right. your checkbook every month or don't you have a checkbook? Uh, my wife has got it down to three cents or less. Your wife. Mm -hmm. uh, give me the check. I and just so, just so this committee is aware of our process, we no invoice is paid through accounts payable. Um, when our process is the it's a, an original invoice and the department head or a I mean a department has to head has to designate a staff member um, the ability to code and sign off on it. Um, and we in our department won't process an invoice if it's not appropriately authorized by the department head and if and coded with a GL account. So just so your you know what our process is, we're just, you know, it does have to have approval. Um, you got checks and balances before we do that. Mm -hmm. And then we have segregation down by us um, in processing those invoices and actually issuing the checks so that the person that's processing the invoices aren't actually um, cutting the checks. So there is, we do have the control, we have put controls in place to make sure that that, that happens. Okay, I would entertain a motion that uh, we would discontinue uh, presenting this at the Finance Committee. If Heidi wants to keep it out there for any particular supervisor to view, that's their prerogative. Also moved. Thank you. Dave Newman seconds. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All the questions for board? I think, Mr. Chairman, just personally speaking, I can only consume so many little minor, minute details. And I've read through that payment register time and time again. And by the time I get to page 63, I don't remember what I read on page 62 because all this detail is just overwhelming. And if these bills have already been paid and we if they've gone through a system of checks and balances and a department head has approved them and everything, I, I I see no reason for me to continue just to read these over and over. And I agree with Supervisor Muck on that. Uh, just, you know, we're supposed to be, the, the county board is supposed to be in charge of a huge operation. And as soon as we start getting involved in all kinds of little minute details, you know, how many paper clips does this off, this employee having their desk, we're gonna lose our sense of focus. <clears throat> and so that, that's why I agree with them. That's why I seconded and I'm all in favor of this. Yeah, I won't even say any more because I believe in what the board's supposed to do and that's not part of it. So I'm gonna call a question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion's carried, thank you. Thank you. Bob, are you taking credit for the jump in sales tax for February? <laughs> All right. Well, Mark's not here, so I'm sitting in for him today. Uh, the first item that we have on the list is the in-rem properties. Um, with Diane's help, uh, she had wrote, written a letter to uh, we sent out, we started the list with 38 parcels. Uh, so far, six have been, been removed. Uh, we have payments, or we're working on payment plans with 20 others. Um, so right now, we're going to send a list uh, for the title of 16 parcels are going to be on the pretty, first list. Pretty low. It, it is pretty low. Uh, with potentially a, a second list um, later in the month of 12. Uh, we're going to wait. Hopefully these people come through with payments or we need another payment, you know, to remove them from the list. So uh, the 16 that we are sending, we haven't heard nothing, no contact back from them. So I don't know if you, you have two mailings back. So two people were <coughs> removed and haven't told you where Beth has that information. Oh, they, they, they got returned. Yeah. Yes. 
And I, I believe at least one of them has went out again with a, with an updated address and a end of the week contact date. So this list could potentially, but yeah, so far we've had pretty good response. So hopefully uh, people continue to follow through with their payment plans. So we're working on the 19s. Yeah, so like I said, six of them have come in and paid the 19s in full, so they're removed from the list. Any other questions on the interim? All right. So well, I'm just glad to see the small number. And I think by keeping it current the board, yeah. you'll see a smaller number too. Right. And, and we're working payment plans. We're trying to get um, a monthly payment that they can make you know every month um one thing that we are doing we are having them keep current with the like the 22 taxes so we're not adding another full year on there so the interest amount is manageable for them as well uh the first item for the financial review um our cash that was decreased during the month uh one of the main reasons february settlement um, we, we appreciate you sending us some money to the contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that would be the, the five million with associated and as well as the bank first uh, investment. We, we had to pull money out to, to pay the municipalities for the February settlement. Um, we also had a loan payment of two million and a bond payment of 1.5 million during the during the month. Second item is the sales tax, the 490. Uh, that's the one of the best months we've ever had. <laughs> so, I just a personal comment. I, for whatever reason, I, I'm not saying COVID is all contributes to it, but people got used to ordering things from home, and that's what you were starting to see more and more. Right. They're not going to other stores way out of our areas. And we have to remember, inflation also helped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, but yeah. <laughs> The higher the price, the more sales yeah, tax. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, our rates are over 4%. It's too early in the month for all the bank statements, but uh, Nicolay and Associated and First State Money Market are all over 4%, 4.1%. So we're getting a good rate of return on our investments. Um, we also did uh, invest some ARPA funds. Uh, for six months with and some T bills at five point one four percent. So, let's see. Yeah, yeah. T bills are up to a little bit. Yeah. So, so we are getting pretty good rates of return on our investments. Anybody have any questions? In the, I mean, when the financials look good, it's, it, we don't get a lot of questions. <laughs> As it appears, as Heidi said yeah. earlier, you're going to be above your budget instead of below. So. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be the opening day starter for you, Todd. Oh, I don't know. It's more early to tell you. Okay. <laughs> Andy. All right. So on the cover sheet, um, authorized Thank position you. counts, resignation, retirements, and terminations, those are in the attachments. Um, we've slowed down a little bit since the first couple months of the year, so I think we're getting caught up a little bit. One of the positions that's not listed um, on the termination log is um, Ted turned his, res his retirement notice in on June, and he'll be done on June 2nd, turn that in on Monday. I know a couple of you know that, the Health and Human Services Board, Ted shared that with, um, so he will be done on June 2nd, so we'll get started in that recruitment process um, shortly, probably. Other than that, all the positions that we've Hired that have resigned or moved on are listed. And then, as far as I think last month on my notes, I had 29 vacancies. Um, we've probably cut that in half. So 
getting caught back up a little bit. Um, have a few vacancies and corrections and in patrol that we're trying to fill, partly due to the retirement of one of our transport officers and the retirement of our detective captain, working through kind of follow up after that. Dispatch, we still have some openings. Um, health and human services, the area is always in social work and behavioral health where we have some challenges in filling those positions one vacancy and economic support due to um, an individual moving into the child support area. And then a vacancy in zoning that we're working on. And we've got some vacancies at highway. So those are the areas we've got the most recruitment happening right now. Any questions on any of the recruitment? Then the last sheet is unemployment. Don't have the February number there, but we had a credit for the month of January. So that's good to see you're starting out really good. And then the other couple of updates um, just on workers' comp and safety. We had a safety meeting on February 20th. We'll have some safety training that Andy Carlin is going to help us with in April, as well as offering some CPR. We do that periodically. So we're going to be having that. And we're working on our renewal planning for health insurance for 2024. That starts this time of year. And then we have a midterm in the summer where we're kind of pulling all of those pieces together. So what we want to do, we have a number of um, our contracts coming up for renewal. So that will take some time to decide what we're going to be bidding out those different pieces. Wellness. This week and then the first week in April are our biometric screenings. So that's when employees have the option to take a biometric screening, which is your lipid panel uh, and height and weight, glucose, those pieces. So we have really good participation with that. Policy items, we're in the process of reviewing all of our policies with updates. We'll be going to the HR committee in April and getting those out to everybody. And then Brewer Home Opener is April 3rd. I, who cares about the, the Cubs? Um, <laughs> so we'll do some sort of event here for our employees for the Brewer Opener. Um, no updates on pending grievances. And then we've put together uh, some supervisory training for the later part of April, which will be going out to everybody today for all of our supervisory staff, which is about 70 employees. And so we'll have um, seven different pieces of that that they can hopefully attend all of it or as many sessions as fits with their schedule. So we're going to cover everything from policy and procedures, safety, um, a couple of different leadership options, and some training that's been requested for the generational piece, which I don't know if any of you have seen Steve Bench. I know Jerry has before. We've had some folks request for him to come back. So he's going to speak to us too. That's all that I got. Any questions for him? The Inspire. Uh, oh, yes, yes. I'm uh, sorry. I jumped right into my report and I skipped over that. Wayne didn't catch me. Well, no, I was going to get to there, but I just thought if you had any questions on what our report was so far. So, Beth Nash from the Inspire program, um, she started in the fall and they've been working with a very variety of businesses across the county to participate in this program, which um, allows for, it's kind of a, a database program that students can log into and look for opportunities for job shadowing, making speech arrangements for different classrooms, trying to engage the youth in what are the careers here in Wapaka County and what businesses offer those, whether it be the Foundry or um, Gusmer or, or whomever. You can post different jobs and they can take a look at what the job description is, what that position involves. And then hopefully we have the opportunity to engage with those folks in those middle school and high school years so that hopefully after they go on to school or trades or whatever it is that they do, they have a base understanding of what's here in Wapaka County in hopes that we can engage them into some careers here with us. So we have not participated in that. There's several businesses in the county that do. Um, we've had her come and speak to our office. She spoke to the department head group. She spoke to the HR group, and we very much would like to participate in it. The cost is based on the number of employees that you have. And so for our size, 
it would be $3,000 for us to participate. That's an annual fee. Um, they do provide a 25% discount if you're a chamber member, and we've never been chamber members before. If that's something we wanted to do, that would bring that cost down to $2,250. As far as had a little conversation with Heidi, as far as us being able to afford it, we could probably fit it into our advertising budget, but not at that full $3,000 mark. So that would be a question either, is it a contingency fund transfer? Is it something you wanna entertain participating in the chambers? What benefits are there to us? You know, We're not a, a business for profit that we could benefit from some of their advertising and pieces like that, but what if anything is their value in that? So. The question that we have for you, is that something you want us to participate in? And then kind of the tie to that is whether or not we want to be, consider joining the chamber to get that discount, or is it something that we want to look at funding um, outside of our department in some other capacity? Thank you, Mr. Chair. There was a question at our HR meeting about joining a chamber. Uh, there are a lot of chambers in Wapaka County, Clinton, London, and of course, Wapaka is, is a leader and they're a nice chamber here, and other cities too. Does that mean we have to join them all because we represent their city too? And that's going to that'd be rather expensive. Now, in the private sector, uh, I was in business in Shano, ripping it all over, and I joined Clintonville. I sure heard from Shano in a hurry saying, You're you got vans based here. We'd like to have you. Ripping way down, ripping, same thing. So I put them all. I couldn't afford it. So, yeah. I think before you would, because we, for some reason, obviously, we haven't done it before. If that's something that you want to do, I think you'd want to know what the benefits are to that, if that's enough value in it that you'd want to consider for us as a, a nonprofit. Um, I don't know if any of the cities participate as the city entity. Um, as part of a chamber or any of the towns. I don't know how that all comes together, but that would be a different discussion. And again, just my listening on the HR and uh, the approach to this subject, and we all discussed it there is like, well, what's the difference if we just approve 3,000 and be done with it versus we'll have the same amount of money probably for the chambers or more? Right. So that we didn't really. Right. By the time you join all the chain chambers, you're going to pay another seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, because so now we'll be. So. I didn't see any gain out of it, but the question is, she'd like to go ahead with this. And from the HR committee, we, I think Jerry, we kind of agreed that was a good idea. This job shadowing and stuff. If that's something, um, just in my conversation with Heidi, then I would probably want to come back and ask for a contingency fund transfer or something like that. I think it would be a great thing because if we can keep the employees in the county for the future, they're 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 going to just economic growth. Yeah, economical growth of it is fantastic because in most cases, as a rural county, it's an outgo as far as after they leave high school, they're gone. If we can keep them and get them into the local job market, uh, we're gaining as a county. So I, I think it's a great opportunity. Newman? Mr. Chairman, thank you. I remember decades ago, farther back than I want to think about, the city of New London mm -hmm. hired a young woman that was on a school to work program, if I remember the details correctly. And uh, She's still employed by the city of New London in essentially the same role. She's grown a lot, a lot more responsibilities and everything like that. But that's just one example of where, uh, you know, you have a local person that stayed in the community, has contributed taxes to the community, has contributed from her wealth of knowledge and everything else. That was a very positive thing. And I think if you know, if this program Inspire Wapaka County uh, is aiming to do the same thing, we should go ahead and, and try that because we know what the statistics are. Uh, young people are leaving their home communities for what they see as grass being much greener on the other side of the fence, which I highly doubt, but, you know, it's what young people see. And if we can do something to convince them to stay home, 
uh, here in their own city or Wapaka County or even this area of the state, uh, we're farther ahead than letting them go to large cities or uh, so forth. So I'd be in favor of us doing this. I think, uh, Mandy, what I would like from the committee here today is to have a motion made to proceed and then you can come back to all your little details of it. I move to have that motion to proceed for that program. More, more seconds. Thank you. Any further discussion? Just a question I have. Did, did they come to you or did you seek them out? Um, they came to us. Okay, I'm they just trying to, to figure us. out how the connection came. Um, probably a couple of years ago, um, Dave Teal had invited me to something at Crystal Falls where they had talked about this program being at some other counties and they were looking to bring that here. And then obviously that's happened and I think they hired Beth in the fall and then she started reaching out to the businesses to engage in that. So it's been around, I think, in other counties for a while. I'll call the question then. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank Most, you. Bring on motions carried. Christy, yours is short and sweet. It is. <laughs> um, the voucher or the per diem for the month with eleven thousand one hundred seventy dollars and twenty cents. I don't see my name on there. Hmm. Ben, I need paid you what you're worth. I know. I know. <laughs> is there a motion to approve the vote? Also move. Second. Thank you. All question, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, I know some of you, I believe, probably were at some kind of a conference or something, maybe since the last meeting or not, or Madison or no? Yep, yep, we okay. were um, supervisors, Bosquez, Harding, Golding, McClellan, and myself, and at the legislative conference in Madison. Um, this is the same report I'll be giving the county board, hopefully, but for me, the highlights was the the presentation by Governor Evers, Speaker Voss, but Senate Majority Leader La Mahou, or how we pronounce his name. It's tough. It, it is. And the minority uh, leaders as well. And some of the highlights, the state currently has about seven billion with a B dollars sitting in their savings account. And the issue is what are they going to do with it? Uh, Governor Evers summarizes budget, which would use the money to spend on a variety of things, many of which were included in the county association's wish list, like mental health, adult protective services, witness protection, general transportation aids, and so forth. Um, the Republican leaders seem to think his budget is dead in the water, and there will be a lot of changes made to it. They said it'll probably be a three-month exercise. The legislators won't probably won't start working on the budget for another month or so. So it'll still be time to contact your local legislators with your views on the budget. Leaders also talked about issues like transportation, workforce housing. They seem to agree that we should provide some tax relief for our taxpayers, but how much and to whom is up for debate. They agreed on the need to expand broadband. They seem to they agreed on the overhaul of financing for local governments, including looking at the sales tax as a bigger source of income for local governments. They also agreed that they want county boards to reach out to their legislators, build relationships with them, so we get to know each other's needs and issues. Uh, attorney Andy Phillips, an attorney for the Counties Association, gave an update on various legal issues including the dark store clarification. Um, if meetings are recorded and posted on YouTube, do they need to be captioned for hearing impaired? Currently not in Wisconsin, but this is probably coming. There was an issue around Gasby standards on leasing, requiring counties to show a full amount of lease on the books as a liability. Uh, one of the counties that brought this up said it would cost them about $13,000 to implement. The counties association is working with the National Counties Association to try to uh, change the requirements. Uh, and there were a number of other issues saying, so I know Joe, if you want to comment. Uh... You didn't leave me anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
there was one comment made in there, and you can help me out on this on on title transfer fees staying at the county level. Did you? Oh yeah, yeah. Cover that. I you know I didn't I didn't write much on that, but money that we're sending to the state and like yep. you know if you sell some sell sell something very expensive, it's like a three dollar per thousand or something. Yep. Mike presented a resolution on that. Um, and, and I don't. Think it, is we did send a resolution yep. through yep. that. We said. Yep. The issue is that the counties do the work, the state's keeping 75% of the uh, right. money. We want to get to 50 50. We want to get to 50 50. Yep. The other big concern that really bothered me, a lot of things that bother me, but I got a wide awakening of what's really going on. And you don't always hear that. But it, what was real interesting, they had a person there by the uh, a research person on, on generations of workers from 2020 to 2030, Dale Knapp. And it's scary. Um, he believes from his research that we're going to have 191,000 new jobs between 2020 and 2030. And we have uh, 30,000 people between 18 and 64 to fill those jobs. So we're probably short 150,000. And what, what's happening is our 20, 20, 20 to 4 year olds are leaving the state and not coming back. They used to leave the state go out and see the world and then come back because we had good schools, we had safety, we had uh, reasonable price housing, we had affordable childcare. Childcare right now is what they're saying. The first one, it's costing you $13 an hour. You heard that and you, I'm gonna look back. My wife taught in the seventies or I should say early eighties when our kids were born. First child was $25 a week and, and it ended up at 40 in the end what we were paying. $40 a week. I know right now people are paying $100 a day when they're taking a couple of kids some places. So when you stop and think, that's why the females are not coming back to work because they're working for nothing if they come back to work, what it's costing. He went a little bit further with a statement that, and I hadn't heard this before and maybe you either, but Quick Trip in their upper office now is providing child care for their employees to return to work. Now, I don't know how, how high up in that office it is. It's there, but then he went on to say that there's two hospitals in La Crosse and one provided childcare for their employees and the other doesn't. And the one that's providing childcare is stealing all the nurses from the other hospital. And I think it's something, I don't know how to address it or how we're gonna deal with it, but we're not keeping people in the state. And I don't, you know, I think, I think we're just one of 72, but it's something we have to face. And child care is one of the issues that we're working on. We have groups working on here in the county. It's, but there's no easy solution, and everybody agreed that the situation is going to get worse, uh, not rather than better. Short term. We see it in New London that some of the, the uh, child care uh, providers are thinking about going out of business. Uh, Robin's Nest, for example, she told me several times uh, as soon as she hits a certain age, she's going to retire and shut down the business and so forth. So where we go from here, I mean, you have all these businesses that are looking for employees. Uh, I won't mention the name of the employer, but they have over a hundred openings they can't fill. And uh, we see situations like this. It's um, wonder, I really wonder where we get the workers. And I was not at the, I have read Dale's comments and this is not something that's gonna be solved this year, next year, the year after. This is, no, you're you, right. could, you could be 10 years out before you even get close to solving it. Fact, we were talking about this 10, 15 years ago when I was with the county association and not keeping the young people in their state. They were in Minnesota, Illinois. Of course, they're making, I forgot how much at that time, more money than staying here. Of course, it costs more to live there too. I know I have a daughter down in Illinois, but uh, that was a big concern back then. And we are not keeping our young people here because there were not enough good jobs here. I don't know what good jobs are, but and the other thing I want to touch base on through my uh, readings on WCA and so on, the county site, there has been some talk about shared revenues. We've been in a shared revenue standstill for years. In fact, 20 years ago, I believe we got more shared revenue than we do now, percentage. And this has been brought up. I brought it up to our, my uh, representative and nothing ever seems to move on it. 
Now, am I right? Did they mention anything about shared revenue? They did. Uh, in 1987, it was 40, the state provided 46% of uh, county funding. It's, in 2019, it's down to 26%. Go, it's almost see. a half of what was. So I was just wondering what they said down at your conference on that. Anybody else at the conference? I don't want to well, I got a couple more words oh, to ahead. say. Um, Robin Voss, our assembly speaker, very outspoken, but very articulate and very, very honest in many respects. And, and he was very concerned about a friend of his that had to build a house that cost him $500,000 when it came to zoning. And he talked about the sidewalk he had to put in. He talked about the special siding he had to have on it. And he, he really, and I don't know if we're going to hear any more from him on that, but he was very concerned about the mandates are crazy that have come from zoning. I'm not saying it's just what back account. I'm just saying what he's saying, he felt there's way too much telling people what to do. And that's why housing has become so expensive. Yep. Plain and plain and simple. That's what I, the other thing I'm going to say about him is he's the one who led the opioid crisis that got this settlement. And I'm very proud of that. I mean, you just think, you know, things have to happen and people have to make noise to make things happen. Right. And he does. I have to go at 10 30. Yep. You so, you, it. so you know that. Yep. <laughs> I'm anything, done. Anybody else? Mr. Otherwise, it's a pretty good one. I, I thought it was a very good session. I've never been to a winter one. I've always been the summer one. But I was impressed. I think what both of you said, and I've always said that before. Whoever your assemblyman, or if you know the senator, you, you got to talk to them. Right. And don't just send them an email. So you really got to sit down and talk. They to said them. that every one of us county board members should be carrying our representative's phone number with us. And I'm as negligent as probably anybody else. As I've never called Kevin Peterson, but we should be ringing his doorbell all the time. I'm dead serious when I say that. You heard the same thing. They say we only hear from people on a crisis. Well, if we don't have a crisis, we don't call. Female state senator now. He called me uh, three, four weeks ago. Must have talked for half an hour about concerns. And we had a great conversation. Uh, just wondering how we in Wapaka County felt doing or whatever. So it was really nice that she went off and, and called. Anything else before we adjourn? Well, I'm proud that I see Dick at the courthouse because the county executive from Outagamie County was only in the Outagamie courthouse. They said 12 hours last month. <laughs> well, that's a compliment for Dick. Guess there were bad roads on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So it's in order to adjourn. So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.